All right, so for lesson two, we're going to talk about scientific argumentation. So the lesson objective for today is to differentiate between a claim, evidence, and reasoning, and to be able to construct a scientific argument. To start out with, we're going to talk, why do scientists make arguments? Um, I guess the, the answer here is scientists make arguments to convince others what they believe is true. So for example, one scientist might argue that global warming is happening, and another scientist might argue that it is not. So a scientific argument really has three parts to it. There's the claim, there's the evidence, and there's the reasoning, or in our case we're going to call it the justification. And you guys maybe have seen this set up over here on this, this picture before where you have your, your question here, the claim, some of the evidence, and, and we'll get into some of this here in a minute. But I think really this can be reordered instead of claim evidence reasoning or claim evidence justification to be uh, evidence first. So a lot of times we see that evidence and then we make a claim as to why we think that the evidence is, is showing us. And then we use justification to explain that. Why does it matter? And so again, if we look over at this picture here, um, we're going to use this setup a lot this year. So we have our guiding question. What is it? What is the, the evidence here? Uh, the answer to that guiding question is our claim and then our evidence shows an analysis so we look at, at graphs we look at data it shows a trend or a difference or a relationship and that's what helps us show our, our evidence here um, this graph indicates this graph shows this graph suggests those types of things are our statements we would make in our evidence column um, and their interpretation so it explains what the analysis means why is this um, what does it mean? What, what does this data uh, interpret for us? The justification part of this, of this diagram is that we use this evidence because this evidence is important because. So it's the reasoning behind why this evidence matters. So we use this graph because it shows how this beetle population did this or this you know, chemical did that. Uh, that's kind of what we're talking about when we talk about this justification part. Okay, so... Uh, evidence then is scientific data that's appropriate and sufficient to support the claim. This includes an analysis interpretation of your uh, analysis. So what does it mean? Again, we kind of just talked about that on that little diagram. The claim is a statement you believe to be true based upon the evidence. It's the data that you gathered and why, um, why you believe that to be true. The justification, again, is the reasoning, explaining why that evidence is important and linking what you did to the bigger scientific principles. Why is the evidence that you gathered important? Why is it meaningful to your claim? Let's take a moment to check your understanding. Can you differentiate between a claim, evidence, and reasoning? Here's an example. Um, what it, I kind of have two of them here. So the, the first thing here is our guiding question. Which metal has the greatest specific heat? So we have three different cylinders here in our picture, and we'll actually probably do this lab here in the classroom, but which one of these three metals has the greatest specific heat? Your job would then to, to be to construct an experiment to help you gather data uh, to make your claim and, and the evidence. Okay, so here's some data. Um, we have our, our different samples here. We weighed them for mass. We have their initial temperature of the metal. So we put them in like boiling water. We get them to be that same temperature. And then we transfer them into um, different, you know, containers with water. We have the different initial temperature reading of the water, the final temperature reading of the water, and that change. And you can see here from our data that sample B changed the temperature the most. Okay, so metal B transferred more energy to the water and caused the temperature of the water to increase, which is more than any of the other metals. So there's our data. Uh, that would be part of our claim. And there's our evidence, okay, this information. And then there's our reasoning right here. Why did we, why is that important? Well, we constructed an experiment and our, our reasoning showed uh, that this sample B uh, change the, the temperature by 5.2 degrees Celsius, which is more than the others. So that answers our question. I'm going to go back here, which has the greatest specific heat. Okay, so again, we could further have some information in our justification part of our of our document here. So different substances require different amounts of energy to change temperature by 1 degree Celsius. 
Each metal absorbs different amounts of energy to reach 100 degrees Celsius. Thermal energy moves from warmer objects to cooler objects, thus increasing the kinetic energy of the particles and therefore the temperature. And greater temperature changes for the water means more energy was transferred from the metal to the water. Again, we're going to go through this when we talk about um, thermal chemistry. This will be a unit that we that we cover in this, this course. Um, so we'll get into some of the scientific stuff later on. But I think you guys understand, I am hoping that you understand kind of the claim, evidence, reasoning, or justification process here. Here's another example. Um, it's kind of hard, confusing, because we're still talking about three different types of metals. But here's my question. What type of metal is object A, object B, and object C? Okay, that's all I'm giving you. So the claim would be that object A and B are tin and object C is lead. This is, a, again, what a scientist could do to figure out an unknown metal. The evidence that they're using is the density of object A is 7.44 grams per cubic centimeter and the density of object B is 7.34 grams per cubic centimeter. And their justification of that is the evidence proves that we are right. Again, this doesn't give us much information. And, and in fact, if this was something that you guys were to turn in, I would say that I'd probably hand it back to you and say we need some more information. Okay. So then student maybe number two, or you turn it back in after that, and you have your same question, same claim. But this time you add in uh, object C's density is 11.12 grams per cubic centimeter. In your justification, you added, therefore, object A and B have almost the same depth density as the known density of tin, and object C has almost the same density of the known density of lead. Again, I think that this is a little bit lacking um, because there is enough difference that they could be different metals, um, but I think I'd hand it back to you again and say, why don't you try one more time? I think this last one's probably the best, um, would be a le best lab argument. So again, just to summarize, the question is the same, which type of metal is A, B, and C? Object A and B are both tin. Object C is the is lead, which would be what that student would be as their claim. The evidence gathered would be the density of object A is 7.44 grams per cubic centimeter, and the density of object B is 7.34 grams per cubic centimeter. These objects have almost the same density as the known density of tin, which is 7.36 grams per cubic centimeter. So you're adding in a little bit more information to help us figure out maybe a percent error. The density of object C is 11.12 grams per cubic centimeter. This object has almost the same density as the known density of lead, which is 11.34 grams per cubic centimeter. Our justification for our evidence is that density is a physical property of matter and remains constant regardless of the amount of the object present. Therefore, density can be used to identify the substance that make up an unknown object. The difference in the calculated densities and the known density is likely due to measurement error. So that provides the example. Uh, this gives us information as to why we have a little discrepancy between what our measured values are and what the known value is. It provides um, that reasoning. And so I feel like this would be a much more complete lab um, report because it, it accounts for some of those things. Again, if you're kind of confused, we would have these known values of densities in a table or something that you would be able to, to measure that from or calculate that from. So um, that's, I guess, the best example of this lab. Again, we're going to check for your understanding. Can you construct a scientific argument? 